Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we are looking at one of the elements of Radzone, my new roll and write solo player, print and play game, which is currently a Kickstarter, but if you're in the future, it's um, available um, probably on Drive-Thru RPG. But that won't be until a little while after the Kickstarter is finished. So, firstly, with Radzone, you have your episode sheet. Now, I'm not going to go over this today, but this shows our character. Okay, we have Lucy Cortana here today. She is out on a mission, which is called Time is Running Out. She has to gather one food, water, medical supply, fuel, equipment, and draw resource. If she fails, four survivors will flee the Rad Bunker, which is kind of like your base. She's already journeyed to the city. And she's followed this process here, uh, which I'll go into another time when we do a full playthrough. But today we're looking at locations. I wanted to show you this. And the reason being, this is a shorter part of the whole thing. You're, we're going to look at one location. Ordinarily, in a game, you probably explore three locations. But I wanted to show you the mechanism, give you an idea about what's involved. So you clearly see she's come to an office. And this is the image of the office here. And it's a um, quite a wide building with a number of search locations. These are dots on the map. And they, the aim is to make it to these locations so that you can then roll on the search matrix, which is a series of tables. This is only a section of it. It's a big document and find the needed resources to complete her mission. Now there's a couple of other things we need to know. For this game, you need three different colored dice. And at the top, you can see here, we've got an order to the dice. We need to know what order, because we're gonna roll them all at once. And we're gonna color these in. So we've got an order to the dice, so just don't forget at the top here, white, red, green. I've got three color pencils, yellow, green, and red, and of course a standard pencil, using mechanical pencil. But these we'll be using to color in this isometric map of the office. Now, we roll those when we're scanning for radiation. So that's what we're doing here. Rad zone set in a post-apocalyptic future where the radiation levels have risen to such an extent, it's nearly wiped out humanity. People are driven down underground and they send out people on missions, such as our Lucy Cortana. Um, she is gathering resources for her bunker. And it's tough because there's lots of radiation around and she's gonna take a dose of radiation while she's out and about getting stuff for her people. Now also on this table, we have a couple of things that I want to highlight. These boxes here, they're kind of designed to sort of catch your eye. Mark off an hour every time you search a space. So every time you search one of these spaces, you can see how they're connected these. OF1 is the reference to the search matrix. And we also have to watch out for extra vision doubles. So these are doubles rolled on these dices that match up to four numbers that we selected before. Let me just rub those out to a previous test there. So we have got three, two, five, and four. Don't ask me why I didn't write them in order, but I didn't. So we don't have one or six. So we're looking for doubles on those numbers. I'm also looking for triples, if you like three of the same color. Three reds, you've got to run this level here, on this table here, or three greens, you've got to run this table here. All right, and that then has an effect on the space. So with that all bearing that in mind, now obviously when you first play it, you're not necessarily gonna remember these things, but you, you will get used to it. So what we've got is a door here so we're going to go in now another thing you might know as well there are some colored spaces already on the map these are 
green are safe areas, red are the radiated areas. If you go onto a red square, you get one point of radiation. If you go onto a yellow square, you get no radiation points, but if you go onto two radiation, two yellows, you get one radiation point. If you go onto green, you're safe. And to determine what color these are, you roll the die. Now if you roll a one or a two, you color the square green. If you roll a three or a four, you color the square yellow. If you roll a five or a six, you color it red. So you're scanning the area in front of you. And that's important to remember, it has to be in front of you. So when you go through a door, let's, go, let's dive straight in, you have to do the, the single square in front of the door. It's the most dangerous area to enter into a building in a sense, because you can't scan either side, because you can't really jump sideways through a door. You have to go into that space in front of it. So we're gonna roll one die. And we get a two to begin with, which is exactly what we want. So we color that square green, like so. Now, we're moving forward, so we go left to right. We've got these three squares we're scanning in front of us. You can scan up to three squares. Obviously, the more you can scan in that sense, the better, because you get a choice of where you're going. So we roll these dice here. So we get a, oh, we get a four, a two, and a five. So that is going to give us a yellow, a green, and a red. Now remember, you go into the red, you get one point of radiation, and that is clocked off on our chart here. You can see, um, this is the previous session here, let me just rub that out. Lucy hasn't got any points so far, so we will cross it off there, if that is the case. Um, a green here, we don't get any radiation, a yellow. Now if you went from yellow to another yellow, you would get a point of radiation, but we're not going to. We're going to go to the yellow and go to the green. We can jump diagonally. You can move diagonally, but you can't scan in a sense overly. Uh, two, two spaces on the diagonal when you're scanning, although one of them is diagonal. You'll get what I mean as we move forward. So, I'm going to go to this green and I'm going to go directly in front of me. I want to try and get through this door here. So this door here. So I'm going to scan, I'm going to scan these three squares here. So we get a six, a two, and a six. Which, you know, isn't bad. You don't really want to have too much red around. Obviously that's the radiation we want to try and avoid but a green in the middle. Because of the order of the dice, don't forget, you can see the order here. We've got the white, red, green. We get a red, green, red. Okay, and that matches up like so. Now, that is exactly what we wanted, a green in the middle. But it's also worth noting here, we have got two sixes. Now, if we go to my extra vigilant doubles, an extra vigilant doubles basically means that person remains vigilant throughout their search. So they may, if they're lucky, spot something extra. And that's what this represents. If you get four doubles, you've spotted that extra thing. And you can see that and you get an extra piece of loot, which obviously counts towards your mission target. So, I've got the green. None of the, none of the extra vigilant doubles that I've written down here, three, two, five, four, two, three, four, five, are included there. So I don't have sixes, so I can't cross one off. So, I'm going to go through this door. Now, again, you can only scan one tile after the door, and it's always risky going through doors. But I'm lucky, I roll a one. I'm going to move into that space there like that. I'm going to scan these three in front of me, these three here, one, two, three. Again, lucky. We get a green, a green, and a red. No doubles. We're getting close to this search area here. So I am going to scan the three in front of me. We get a five, a four, and a one. So that is a red, yellow, red. Like so. I can go onto 
the green and scan these two here if I wanted to. I can go to the yellow and scan three. Now the reason why if you went from the green here you only scan two is because there's a wall here and that blocks your scanner. You can't scan beyond the wall so you get an option of scanning two. So you get less chance of getting a good number. As you go to the yellow and you scan three, there's a higher chance of you getting a green in those three, three rolls. So that's what we're going to do. We don't want to be going into a yellow afterwards. As it happens, we roll, or ironically, we roll a green, uh, a green on the other side of it, and a yellow in the middle. That means this search location is a yellow. Now, it's already apparent that you can backtrack. So what we're going to do with this is we are going to, going to go from the green into the yellow and then back to the green. Okay. In that way, we're not going on two yellows. And you have to think about it in the sense, common sense of the, of, of the reality of it. So you wouldn't voluntarily go through two yellow. You would skip back to the green and then back to the yellow to be able to do that. So that gives us access to um, OF1, which is on the search table here. You can see Office 1. Now this, again, this first table is a, uh, is a reference table in a sense. It sends you to another um, table. And that's so that we can expand out the number of options that we have on the search criteria. So roll a 1, and that means we roll on the OF2, and we roll a 4. Now sometimes when you're rolling you will get a bonus if you have a particular type of object or item that might help with your search. So check your equipment on your uh, episode sheet. Now as it happens, Lucy has a tool belt. So if she gets, if she finds equipment, she can double that equipment total by one, in a sense. No, she can double it, she can do it once on a location. So if she finds equipment in this particular location, she can, uh, as I say, double it. Uh, number four, you pull free some decent lengths of metal sheet, bind them together and tie them to your backpack, gain one raw resource, which is great. Because as it happens, she does need some raw resource for her mission. So we can put one raw resource here. Okay, so she's already one sixth of the way through her mission. So put that down there. Okay, let's move on. So let's have a think as well. We want to try and get to the back space here where these high numbers mean you get more resources. We are going to uh, head forward then and make our, our way up to this door in front of us and see how that progresses. So let's try it. Right. We have got a yellow, red, yellow. Put that in there like that. I'm going to try and stay in this central corridor if I can, although you can't with the red there. So I'm going to go from the green, I'm going to go yellow, green, and then to this yellow here, because you've got three here, and that that's what I mean by the central corridor, as wide as possible. If you up to the walls, you get less options. So yellow, one, two, three. I'm going to roll for that one there. Oh, look at that. We get a triple. So you get one, two, three. Now, um, three ones, and that is three greens. Okay. So... Rolling three greens is a means you roll on the low levels table. It, tr it shows that that space is quite free of radiation. So we're going to um, roll on this. Now, it gives a number of options. You can add more green to the room, but you can actually also minus a radiation point because your body's kind of almost relieved of the pressure of the intensity of the radiation. So your levels drop a bit. So we're going to roll a die here and see what we get. Six, minus one radiation point. Now, ironically, 
as yet, Lucy hasn't taken any radiation. And that would have been really handy to be able to have that because you, you can get, radiation can shoot up sometimes. But you can't go below zero. So at, under those circumstances, she doesn't get any, any bonus out of that roll. If she'd say rolled a three, she could have put some greens in up to the door, which would have been very handy indeed. Anyway, we're going to carry on from this spot here. And actually, we're not rolling too badly at all here. We've got a green, yellow, green. And that has put a green at this doorway, which is something to think about for further exploration of the building. We're going to roll from this green here into these spaces here. Yep. So we get two, three, four. Okay, so that is a green in this space here. And then two yellows. So we get yellow in front of the door. Not much we can do about that. So we're going to go from the green to the yellow and then we're going to roll for the door on the other side and see how that works. We get a four. Okay, so the space beyond is yellow. So that means because we've gone from green to yellow and now we've got to another yellow, we can't do anything but take a radiation point. Now we could go back through this door here, but I'm inclined to try and push on for this better loot in this room at the back here, because these numbers are higher. So we will take a radiation point. I'm gonna cross one off there. You can see there's a bit of a shadow here from testing we've done before with this sheet. So she's got one radiation point, poor Lucy, but she's pushing on. So she's going through this space here into these three here. We've got one, six, and a three. Okay, so we've got at least one green there. I don't think I've missed any other doubles. Oh, with the triple one that we had, I knew that we didn't have a double because we don't have double ones. So, oh, look, I've done that color the wrong there. That's a yellow. Okay, so we've got green, red, yellow. We're going to go onto the green and then move up, aiming for these spots here. All right, so we get a yellow and then we get two reds. All right, so suddenly it's feeling a little bit more dangerous in these spaces. So you can see here we've got these two reds and the yellow. I'm going to go from the yellow, it means I can only scan two spaces. Let's give it a go. We get a three and a six. Right. That means we've got a yellow and a red. Now that is pretty dangerous. I could get another point of radiation or I could, I could track back to this green, go to that yellow and scan this space here. If I was to get a green in that space, we'd go green to yellow. Let's try that. I need one die. Nope, it's a red. So we're scanning there, it's a red. So if I'm to progress beyond this space here, I'm gonna to need to take a radiation point because either I go from the yellow to yellow here, and I know it looks green, it's yellow. And that gives me one radiation point. And then I can only scan in one space there. Or I go through these spaces here. Do I take another radiation point? I think I'm going to risk it. I'm going to take a radiation point. Put that on there like that. And then I'm going to scan these two spaces here. I get a one and a three. So that is not ideal, but it's good. So ideally, you would have had a green in the middle spot here. Because I'm going that direction, you go left to right. So we get a one and a three, a green and a yellow. I'm going to go to the green. I can scan this space here and that space there. So I can only scan two because the wall's there. I get, a, I get a three. I get a six and a three, which results in a red and a yellow. Now I can go from the green to yellow to the green, because there's already a green marked on here, you can see. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the green and then I'm going to 
go this way, I'm going to roll two die, one, two, because I'm looking towards this direction. I get a three and a one, which actually isn't bad. So I get yellow, and I colour that yellow as well, and a green, which can lead me on to the next space. So, we've got a zero, uh, a naught F, uh, sorry, an O F eight there, and we are going to look at the table. So this doesn't take you to O F one, where you get that kind of random selection. This takes you to something a little bit more rewarding. Um, so we're going to roll on here and see what happens. Five, you rifle through a large uh, bank of filing cabinets to find a collection of scalpels and knives. Add one as a weapon and one equipment. So if you remember correctly, we have the tool belt. Her skill here, the tool belt, which allows her to double her an equipment find in a building, which is what we're gonna do with that. So we're gonna put two equipment, and one weapon so we get a scalp and a knife as a weapon which is good for combat evasion when you're journeying to and from the city you can encounter bandits while you're on missions okay so not a bad result there now you also notice on here Two equipment is more than the one equipment that Lucy needs to fulfill the mission. You get no bonuses for extra um, gathered resources when you go back to your base. But while out on mission, sometimes you do meet people who will trade items. So if you've got extra equipment, you could trade it for a food, say, for example. Right, let's carry on further up here. So we're on, from this green, we're going to scan the two going to scan two and we're going to move up the building to this space at the back here and then across to there. So we get a five and a four which is obviously a red and a yellow. We're going to go to the yellow, it takes us out to give us this opportunity to scan three here. So we're going to scan those three. We get a six and a six, a six, three, and a six. Double sixes, remember, we are uh, marking, looking for extra vision doubles. Those there. And um, we get a six, and we get a yellow in the middle. And a red and a red here. Okay, so if we went into that space there, we'd pick up a point. So what we're going to do is we're going to scan these two tiles here, hoping this could be a green. We go green to yellow, okay? So we, we don't have to have the intensity of going from one space to another. I know they're just next to each other, but the distance and the break you get from being in a non-radiated zone prepares you to move into a slightly radiated zone. Now, just while I remember, we have searched two areas so far, these two here. Now, when you search an area, you need to cross off your timeline. So we're going to cross off two there. Now it took one hour to get one hour to get to the city. And then we've searched twice. And you have to mark off an hour for every search that you do. You have 24 hours to do this mission. Right. Let's scan these two here. We need the and we are lucky. Look at that. We get a green, because we're heading in that direction, we get a green and a red. What this allows me to do is jump to the green to the yellow, and then I can scan these two here. See what happens. We get, okay. Right. We have got a two reds there. So this is a bank of reds. Now, this does not count as three reds even if there's a red there already, because you only rolled two die, okay? You have to roll three to get the effect of the high levels table. 
but looking at it this doesn't seem like the best option if we go from the yellow to the red we're going to get a radiation point it's got two already it's a big take it's a big search it's a good location I think what we'll do is we will scan we will definitely scan I think we're going to do it we're going to search it we're going to take the radiation point if say you're thinking if on a mission you might search three buildings so three points per building isn't so bad we don't really want to be taking any more so it's an it's an the eight table again let's get that out have a roll see what we roll two an old generator has been rigged up in the back room the space long abandoned though you find two fuel excellent we we'll put two fuel on the two fuel and you can see that's again one of the targets is fuel so we're sort of halfway there on our search it's coming along nicely we also got some uh, resources to bargain with so we're going to trace back to the green here and I'm going to try and make it for this um, this section uh, here so we're going to try for that let's get the die so green we've got one two three we are actually scanning the one in front of the door and we're we're very lucky again we've got a double one now that um again it doesn't serve as an extra vigilant double for me but it means that that door has a one in fact this brings up the low levels table i'm going to roll on that again if we can get a six this time we get three this time color in three more tiles green anywhere in this room right so that might be handy so what we'll do is we'll try and make a path to this other door here so we're going to put we're going to color this one in green and we're going to color in this one green and this one green here all right so what that means is if i want to at some point i can come back and go into this space here and maybe search that area there all right so we are going to proceed through this door here into this back room there's already two red tiles colored in here so it is a little bit trickier so we're scanning for one space in front of the door we're lucky we get a two let's take us into there and then we're going to scan one two three here so we get yellow green yellow i'm going to put that like that and then yellow we're going to we're going to go forward to the green and scan one two three in front of us which includes the search tile now that search tile so we get red red green red red sorry red red yellow now do i want to risk i can't really take another point i don't want to take another point i want to be able to search other buildings so i'm not going to go for that search area there uh, in fact it doesn't appear like there's a really very productive way through i'm going to try and scan for this space here see if i can get down this way one dice and it's a red and get five so I'm going to put the red there. So I'm kind of blocked off there. I don't want to take any more radiation. I could try this one up here. So if I'm there, it will be three this way. Potentially, I go from the yellow. So I'm going to scan one, two, three. I get yellow, yellow, green. Interesting. So this takes two yellow there and a green here. And then... I'm going to scan above so that's two i get a yellow and a red like so i could try and aim for this one up here i'm going straight into the yellow 
let's see what happens. So we're going up again. I get a green and a red. Like that. And then I'm going to do the same again, two up here. And I get a green and a red. There's a bank of red radiation surrounding this search location here, look. See this, all this red here. I'm going to scan these two in front of me again. I get a red and a green. Wow. Okay, so we get a red and a green. I'm going to go into this green and then I'm going to face with one, two, three. This one being the first one because I'm going this direction. So I get, wow, I get, I get a green, green and a yellow, which means if you look at that little trail there, I'll come in round the back, come up the back there and across, scanning as I go, and then suddenly this space is open and this search area is available. So we've got to roll on that table again, RF8. Let's do it. Six. There is a safe at the back of the rear office, and after some time you manage to crack the code and find a stash of medicine gained two medical supplies. Wow. This has turned out to be an awesome trip. Let's go. Um, let's take across off another time zone. In fact, that's our fourth. We need to do one more. So we've got one more there. You can count them up at the end when you leave the space just to double check you've crossed off the right amount of time. And um, we also get to add on to our two medical supplies. Put them in there. Brilliant. That is really, really advantageous. So. I am going to leave it there. Now you could go further into the building. This has given you a good example of how the game works. We were really lucky. Often you'll get stuck at the beginning of a building and won't be able to get any further. To exit a building, you just need to be near a, um, a rear wall. Now I need um, medical, I need food and water. So I may well go to a supermarket, which would be um, perfect and we will and you can actually hear that is the ice cream van in the neighborhood in the background there <laughs> I'm gonna to go to hospital or supermarket to get some food and water which gives you a much higher chance of finding that so I'm gonna leave the building here at this wall and head off so what we can see now we've explored the office is a journey through the radiation skipping through certain areas, taking a hit of radiation at the back where it was obviously quite hot with radiation over here, and then this space over here where we managed to avoid and then clamber through a window with our, our loot. And this is what we call the radiation heat map, and each building gains one once you've explored it. And it's something actually that I'd like to share with people through Board Gaming Geek. If you get your own um, radiation heat maps, it'd be awesome to see them see where your adventure went and to find out how many resources you you discovered now this is version one so once it's unleashed and hundreds of people are playing it we are always open to suggestions and tweaks and if you're finding things too easy or too hard then we also want to hear that as well we have tested it and we have recently tweaked it this week with some feedback from some testers so we are at that stage where isn't set in stone. In fact, I never like to think of any game set in stone. You can always have new versions of things, which is what we're working towards. But so far, this has worked really nicely. We're enjoying playing it. I hope you will too. Don't forget to get involved with the Kickstarter if it's still running while you're watching this video, or jump onto Board Game Geek and join in the Rad Zone community there. Guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up. And if you haven't subbed already, it'd be really awesome if you could. Thanks again.